Hello friends, welcome back to another session of Core Java Tutorials. Today we'll see constructors. In the previous class, I have discussed about how to define a class and how to create uh, objects. So this is the syntax of uh, for creating an object. So you have the class name, then the reference variable, then new operator is used for allocating memory on the heap for the object and then class name followed by the parentheses. One thing that you need to keep in mind about new operator is that so this always will not create, uh, will not allocate memory for you because memory is finite. Okay, since memory is finite, there are chances that uh, the it, it may not create, uh, it may not allocate memory for the object on the heap. So there are chances that it will not allocate the memory. So in case if new operator is not able to, in case if JVM is not able to create memory for the object on the heap, it will give an error which is out of memory error. Out of memory error and this error will be found during runtime. For the simple programs that we write, uh, maybe memory will be allocated but when you are working with real world uh, projects then maybe you may encounter such kind of situation. Okay, so coming to the constructor, the class name followed by parentheses is called as the constructor. So this is the constructor over here. Now the constructor, is it mandatory for us to give the constructor? So if you just refer to the yesterday's class that I have uh, taught you, so I have given the general form of the class wherein I didn't use the constructor in the general form. So it is not compulsory to write the constructor in your class. If you are not writing the constructor, what will happen? If you are not writing the constructor, so what will happen is the compiler during compilation time, the compiler during compila compilation time will add the default constructor to your code. The compiler will add the default constructor during compilation to your code. So in your source code, so if you say this is your source code, in your source code there will be no constructor. But when this source code is converted to the byte code, okay, so when it is converted after compilation, it is converted into your, this byte code is nothing but your dot class file. So inside your dot class file, you will be finding this default constructor. The default constructor means that something which will not have anything in the body. Okay, so the constructor will be having the name of the class as its name. Okay, so just it will be having the class name followed by parentheses and an open bracket and close bracket. So such type of constructor is called as the default constructor. And if you are not mentioning one in your program, the compiler will add it during compilation to your program. Okay. Let us take a look at, into some important points about constructor. Constructor defines what occurs when an object of that class is created. Constructor initializes an object immediately upon creation. Not only initialization, okay, generally uh, the widely used purpose of constructor is to initialize an object immediately upon creation. But, on, but not only for initialization, it can be used for error handling and writing some other logic and, and for object creation. So starting a thread and calling a method. So all this you can do inside a constructor other than just initialization. And constructor cannot be static. So you cannot say static box or static a, static class name. Okay, so constructor cannot be static, abstract, final and synchronized. We'll see all this uh, uh, in the coming classes. And constructors can have all access modifiers. It can be default, it can be public, it can be protected, it can be private. Constructors have same name as class name. And syntactically, constructors are similar to a method. Constructors do not have explicit return type, not even void. So I want all of you to remember that. Generally, if there is no return type, we say void, not even void. Okay, so it doesn't have any return type explicitly. Implicitly, the return type is the class type. These are some very important points that we need to keep in mind before knowing about constructor. Take a look at this particular program. So the class is box and inside the box class I'm having three instance variables and one method which is main method. So this is the entry point of the program 
and inside the main method I have created one object and the name of the object is one so that's a reference variable for the object and I have tried to print the instance variables you can see in the entire program I have not initialized the values of width height and depth now pause the video and try to take a guess on what will be the output of this particular program so if you are not mentioning any constructor in your entire program so the compiler will add a constructor so the constructor looks like this so it will have the name like the class name so the constructor name also will be box and I said that this will syntactically look like a method so there will be parentheses and then there will be an open bracket and a close bracket so this is the default constructor that the compiler will add into this program now where does this compiler add this code into the program so there is no rule like initially there should be variables and after that there should be constructor and then only there should be methods there is no specific place in the class like you can give your constructor at the top then declare your uh, I mean variables and then you can have your methods so you can jumble them but according to the good programming practices we generally give the variables at the top and then the constructor and the method so it is not mandatory that you fo follow the place rules of the variables methods and constructors you can give this constructor wherever you want you can write this main method before and also give the uh, variables at the bottom so it is correct syntactically and this box this is called as the default uh, constructor which will be added into this code by the compiler during compilation so what is the purpose of this com uh, constructor so the purpose of the constructor is this okay so constructor initializes an object immediately upon creation so this object is having these three instance variables so the object name is one one is holding three instance variables those are width height and depth okay so the object is holding these three values now the constructor will initialize them to what values the, the constructor will initialize them the constructor will initialize them to the default values of the primitive data types so the default values default value for double is 0, 0.0 so it will add for width it will add 0, 0.0 and for height it will add 0, 0.0 and for depth it will initialize to 0, 0.0 so when i try to print the values of width height and depth so now the output will be 0, 0.0 0, 0.0 and 0, 0.0 so this is the purpose of the constructor my friends and this instance variables will be initialized right when this constructor is called so instance variables are initialized okay right when the constructor is called even if you mention a constructor or do not mention a constructor in your program it's not a problem if you are not mentioning one then obviously your compiler will add but uh, the point is like uh, there will be many objects in your program why will you keep the default values you would like to add certain values of your own into the width height and depth so for that reason most of the programs will have explicit uh, constructors declared by the programmers it will be very rare to see a default constructor in the programs okay so explicitly the programmer will give the constructor because we don't want to keep the default values right in the program so we'll just see that version now say for example uh, during declaration of the instance variables itself i'm initializing them like i said double width is equal to two height is equal to one and depth is equal to three in this case what will happen in this case the default constructor will be called but these values will be initialized like, like 2 1 and 3 will be initialized rather than the default values so what will be the output of this program the output of this program will be 2.0 and 1.0 and 3.0 okay fine you cannot do it this way like you cannot say width is width like this and then again somewhere around the program you cannot say width is equal to uh, two okay so this is what you will be doing it in your methods but with the class instance variables you should not do this kind of uh, declaration at one place and initialization at another place is not acceptable but you can do this kind of uh, declaration and initialization at two different places provided that you are putting it in an initializer block 
okay so say for example i want to initialize it okay so i can say height and then i can say depth and after that i can write an initializer block which will be simply a block and inside this i can say width is equal to 2 and height is equal to 1 and then depth is equal to 3 and then close the initializer block i can do it this way but without this initializer block i cannot simply say double width at one place and width is equal to 2 at another place okay what is the problem if we just initialize the instance variables uh, we'll just see that okay so it is a very rare case where you want all the objects to have the same values that's a very rare case but mostly your each and every object will have its own kind of uh, instance values okay uh, so i'll just try to depict what is a problem so here i am having two objects object one and object two object one and object two have got the same values for width height and depth when i try to print the width height and depth of uh, uh, object one the answer will be 2.0 3.0 and 1.0 and when I try to print the width, height and depth of object 2, again the values will be 2.0, 3.0 and 1.0. So they both will be having, how many ever objects you declare, you create, they will be having the same values. So that's the reason why we always need to explicitly declare. Let me look at the types of constructors. There are two types of constructors. One is the implicit constructors and the second one is explicit. What is meant by implicit constructor? Implicit constructors are the constructors uh, which are by default added by your compiler into the program if you are not mentioning any. That is called as default constructor. Now explicit constructors are the constructors that the programmer write in the programs. Okay. Some people say that no arcs is also called as the default constructor. Okay, so don't get confused between this default constructor and this default constructor. We can say that this default constructor is a system defined default constructor. Okay, so which is added by the uh, compiler. And no ox constructor which is also called as the default is the user defined constructor. Okay, and another difference between this, uh, this default and this default constructor is that this will not have anything in the body. Okay, so this is class name and parenthesis and this is the body of the constructor and there will be nothing inside the body of the constructor. But in the no arcs so or the default constructor that the programmer defines, so there can be something inside the body of the constructor. You can write anything inside this, but the only thing is there is no arcs. Okay, so there will not be any arguments, but the body of the constructor can have some code in it. That's the difference between implicit default constructor and explicit default constructor. Now coming to the parameterized constructor, it means that the constructor will have more than one or more than one parameters inside it. So it will be having one or more. Okay, so more than one parameters inside it. Okay, so uh, parameters list. So this is called as parameter parameterized constructor. Now remember one very important point friends that if you are writing your own constructor in the program, then the default constructor will not be added into the program. Everything you only have to take care of. What, what The functionalities of the constructor you only have to take care. The default constructor will not be added. So we'll just, I, I'll just write a program and show you these constructors. I have written the same box class with the constructor. So this is the constructor. So see that the name of the class and the constructor name are same. And it looks like a method with an parenthesis over here. Okay. And this is the explicit constructor that being programmers we have written in the program. And this is the parameterized constructor because it is having parameter list. Okay. So there are three arguments. All the three are of double type. And we are taking these uh, arguments and we are assigning them to the instance variables. So these are the instance variables and we are taking these and we are initializing them. So the constructor functionality, I mean it is having many functionalities but the major functionality of the constructor is we generally use it for initializing the variables. So inside the main method, so we have created an object but here take a look at the change in this part of the code okay so i said box and then we are passing the 
actual arguments we are passing the arguments over here so i said 2 3 and 4 now when your compiler sees this what happens is now the arguments will be passed into that okay so, th so these are the actual arguments the actual arguments will be passed into the formal arguments this will be similar to your methods okay and w will be having 2 and h will be having 3 and d will be holding 4 and these three values will be given to width height and depth for the object one okay so object one will be holding two three and four and after that we are we are creating another object two and the values are 1.5 2.8 and 1.3 again the same constructor will be called but this time it will be called on the object two so now the objects width height and depth will be 1.5 2.8 and 1.3 See friends, like with the use of the constructor, we are taking different values for the for different objects. If we initialize, then every object will be having the same value. But here through constructor, we are giving different values to the objects. And when you try to print them, they will be having different values. This will be 2, 3 and uh, 4. This will be 1.5, 2.8 and 1.3 will be printed on the screen. Now one very important uh, thing is that say that I am just calling I, I have just written box like this okay I want all of you to take a pause of this video and guess what will be the output okay fine see I this program will not compile why this program will not compile is it will not compile because I already told you that if you are writing one constructor in the program default constructor will not be added so the implicit constructor will not be added so what will happen is your compiler will ask you telling that the actual parameter list and the formal para parameter list is not matching and i require a double 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 kind of arguments inside this so this is not no args constructor is not allowed because there is only one constructor here and this according to this constructor only you have to write your you have to call the constructor so the default constructor will not be included in your program so this program will not work so so you will be getting an error okay right friends and another point i would like to add here uh, but which is not related to this but still i just wanted to talk because we just have started off is this for example the actual um, the formal arguments names are also same to the instance variables. So I am saying width is equal to width. Now what will happen? I want all of you to take a pause and guess the output again. So now the output will be the values of 1 will be 0 0.0, 0 0.0 and 0 0.0. Because your compiler will be confused which is the instance variables and which is the value that we have passed so it will not assign the values to it so the answer will be 0, 0.0 and all that okay so take care and if you want it to be very specific then we have to use this operator we'll discuss that later but as of now i hope everybody understood how to write parameterized constructors